Mina, Konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Back with more Deuteronomy and a little bit more of an answer for why God has so many horrible curses and judgments. I feel like it, I wasn't even purposefully pursuing this as a topic or even something that I wanted revelation on. It's just as I've been reading, maybe because it's currently in mind, maybe because the Lord wants to show me and through me, y'all, a little bit about what he was doing in the Old Testament. It's just, I'm going to stay on that whole topic. Judgment, fierceness, wrath. I'm going to start in Deuteronomy chapter 30. I'm just going to start with verse 1, and I am going to read for a little while. Now it shall come to pass when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God drives you, and you return to the Lord your God and obey his voice according to all that I command you today, you and your children, with all your heart and with all your soul, that the Lord your God will bring you back from captivity and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you. If any of you are driven out to the farthest parts under heaven, from there the Lord your God will gather you, and from there he will bring you. Then the Lord your God will bring you to the land which your fathers possessed, and you shall possess it. He will prosper you, and multiply you more than your fathers. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Another reason that the Lord brings such fierce judgments against his people then and his people now sometimes be, it's because he knows we're going to mess it up. He knows that we're going to do something to earn the curse. At the very beginning of that chapter, once you have gone through the blessing and the curse. And sure enough, we read a, a continual cycle in the Old Testament of blessing, curse, repentance for the sin. Then they're blessed again. They fall away. And then God curses them. And then they repent. And that happens over and over and over and over. God wasn't being mean. He knew our hearts. He knew what we would do. He knew what Israel would do. He knew what the church would do. We didn't know what we would do. He did. So that judgment was prepared ahead of time so that when we made those mistakes, when we sinned against him, we had full warning ahead of time, hey, you're going to mess up, you're going to fall away, I'm going to judge you, and you deserve it. So there's really, how can I put it, there's not much more God can do except for take away our free will and make us a bunch of robots. He knew we were going to fall away, and he already prepared a way to bring us back after the curse fell upon us. And like I read in Lamentations on the Sunday Sermon, his wrath does not last forever. He will bring his people back. He will bring us back when we fall away from him, and I've experienced that so many times. Can't wait to share more of my personal story with you guys. I'll go ahead and close this off for now. This isn't supposed to be a long message. So, he knew what we were going to do, and he loved us anyway, and he essentially promised to judge us for our sins and then still bring us back, because that's how much he loves us, and I love you guys, and I pray the Lord's richest blessings on you.